Yeah, so Alan had asked, you know, like, he said, so where do you begin? Do you begin with somebody's problem? Right. Are you moving them away from their problem? Are you moving them towards an outcome? What are you doing? And I think that a lot of that has to do with where the prospect is at. Where, what, what is the conversation that's going on in their mind? Where are you jumping into that? Because, like, look, for the individual that... Go, typical Gene Schwartz, for the individual that has a problem, is fully aware of it, and knows that they, they, they desperately want relief from that problem, well, I, I think you'd be leaving a gargantuan amount of money on the table to not start with that problem. But then, but, 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 wait, but, on that, but wait, on that, okay? Yeah. Like, because this is a point where Todd and I may differ greatly, I don't know. To me, that is all selling, no marketing. When someone is in that position, it's not a marketing job anymore. You're like they're already looking for a solution. Like they've already convinced themselves they need a solution. No, now, wait, like, hang on. So wait, so I do. I disagree with you. I know you're going to disagree with it. My perspective on it is that I'm not talking to your periscope people. Right now, <laughs> so really um, my perspective on that is that when someone is now in search of a solution. They like you're assuming that somebody is in search. Well, no, you solution. said they had they have a problem. They're aware they of the problem. Pl- they want to solve the problem. Well, wait. They want relief from their problem. They don't necessarily. That they might have like let's say low back pain, but they haven't. They don't know yet whether are, are they are they looking for a chiropractor, massage therapist, drug surgery. They just know they've got back pain and they want it. They want it gone. I would say that in general, even that, like that's maybe right on the borderline. But I think a lot of people. I think, okay, here's my deal, and you can disagree. Um, I think the majority of people who call themselves marketers don't market at all. They do more selling than they do marketing. And and that most, where the where money is mostly made is on the marketing side, not the selling side. And if you look at like all the big product launches, you'll see that they, those were all marketed. There wasn't a need in the market, like people weren't desperately searching for a solution for that thing at that time. Mm-hmm. And and so like, you know, when you, talk, and I talked about this in the webinar that we just did, like, you know, you have the, the prospect pyramid, 3% are want to buy right the, now. The webinar what, at strategicproducts.com? There was <laughs> 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 uh, The, uh, but like, when someone, When someone is already like in pursuit of a solution, they really are now open to being sold. They don't like. They don't. Do you know what I mean? Like, the time to market is when they they have the problem. They're not searching. They don't even know whether it's solvable or not. Mm-hmm. They they haven't pursued any. Um, Should the copy on a cold traffic ad speak to the problem? Then your page speak about the solution. Well, Good question. Who asked that? I faded out. Well, the copy. But when, once you get into copy, it depends. Because if you're, if it's a sales letter, that's a sales situation. That was Alan, by the way. Uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm just going to show Alan for a second. Yeah. So, like, you can be embarrassed yeah. on the screen. Um, wow, yeah. that will never happen again. Our cameraman <laughs> parted on a live person. <laughs> Um, oh man, talk about And two people left because they said it smelled. <laughs> Actually, I thought I saw more hearts. Like somebody was like, um, yeah, I, I think most most people, especially in our market, they group, they group selling and marketing as one thing. They're totally different, and um, and they confuse selling with marketing, and so they tend to oversell and undermarket. And um, I totally agree. I mean, I talk about that all the time, but I still think. I still don't think we answered the the. So the question about a, a page, though, it really depends where that tra- if they're cold traffic, and you're trying to sell them on that page, then you're already in a sales situation. Right. Like it, it define it's if that's a bridge page, maybe it's a marketing thing. But if it's just if you're taking them down to a landing page, and you're trying to convert them. It is a sales like it's a sales thing at that moment. But I think don't you? I mean, I would say the way that I would answer that question, I, I, and I don't, you know. The way that I would answer that question is really the same way that, that I answered the, the other one, and that is that it really depends on what segment of the market you're going after. Like, I mean, like, you know, look, if you're if you're talking to, like, look, let's start with the lowest level of awareness, right? You're not going to start with the problem. You're not, you're right. not, it's not, a, but if you're talking to somebody who 
has the problem and is aware of the problem. Like, like, look, it's kind of like this. Like, if you are, let's say you're selling a software that helps protect WordPress websites from uh, being damaged by hackers. Okay. And so, right, the, the market ultimately consists of everybody that's got a WordPress website. But then there are some people that haven't been hacked yet. Right. They don't even know anything about hackers. They don't know about WordPress security. And then there are people that they, they've been hacked. And they don't even know what to do to, to, right. to solve that. Well, where you start in the in the marketing funnel is going to differ for those two segments, right? You can't start with the problem with a completely unaware person who hasn't been hacked yet because that's not in the front of their mind. The person who is aware of the problem and maybe hasn't chosen a solution yet because they don't even know if it's solvable, we're going to start with the problem. Like that you're hacked and what happens when you're hacked and your, your site is going... So I really think that the answer is more about what segment of the market are you targeting with the ad because depending on the segment is going to determine well, where you go. Okay, so the way I look at that, which is a little different but similar, is that like someone who's been hacked who's now looking for a solution, that once again, now they're in the selling side of the equation. They they want to know that this word this way of doing it is better than that way. Well, like, wait, you know, but hang on. So, but I think that well, I agree with you, but I think that right. So there's problem aware, right? There's solution aware, then there's product aware. So like you've got the person who they know that they've been hacked, right? And they don't even know now. Like they just know that they've been hacked. Their site has this weird, crazy thing up, right. and and they just know that they they they, they can't figure out it, right? Then there's an individual that is, they're aware of all the different solutions out there, and um, and now it's about marketing and selling them on why they want to go the software route and not, let's say, the consultant route or the new server route or something like that. Then you've got the individual that has decided they want software. They're now searching in Google, you know, for you know, WordPress hacking prevention software or whatever. And now you you have to still convince them through marketing and selling that your software application is the best of all software applications. Yeah, I would see that as more, much more a selling, uh, a much more of a selling situation than a marketing situation. It's interesting. Okay. Uh, Tom Hanks makes a point. Tom Hanks from uh, from. from uh, the, the oh, Castle. Yeah, Castle. What, what is your favorite movie, Todd? What is my favorite movie? That's a tough one. Or question. top three contenders. Top three contenders? Did you see Dirty Grandpa? No, I didn't see Dirty Grandpa. The fact that you even mentioned that in the top three discussion. It's, it, it's pretty funny. 